Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to continue on, I know I dropped it for about a month, with our Evan Rue Johnson V4 lower unit rebuild. Remember the problems we had? You can go back and check my videos. I think it was back mid-December, mid to late December, actually it was probably beginning of December, that I started to tear down. The first challenge we noticed was that that shift shaft was locked in there and would not move. But first of all, I have my used outboard motor buying guide for sale on Amazon now. I talked about it for months. I finally got it done. That's what happens when you have a mechanic using a computer. Luckily, I have a wife that's really good with a computer, and she helped me get this squared away. So it's for sale on Amazon now for $20. If you purchase and you send me an email at keith.outboarddad.com with proof of purchase, I will offer you a half an hour session over the phone, a $250 value to help you with a motor you're looking to buy or maybe a boat you're looking to buy. So reach out and let me know what you got going on so I can help you out. So let's take a look at this lower unit and where we're at with it right now. What we did is we pulled out our bearing carrier. If you remember, we did that. Remember, we threaded these holes a little bit to drive a couple screws in there so we could pry them up. Again, we didn't cut deep threads in there, just enough to get a couple bolts so we could pry this up out of place. I believe this to be like a 95 motor so 94 so for it to be that old and be able to pull this out is is really helpful and it's actually not that corroded it actually looks in pretty good shape it wasn't leaking from these top seals we sprayed bubbles on it but we got a whole seal kit so we're going to pull these seals out there's also a rubber o-ring that goes around here we're going to replace we already took that one out if you remember that shift shaft would not move and i've had this happen before there's o-rings in here something about them they expand inside there let me see if i can get a flashlight they expand inside there and they just grab that shaft so hard that it's very hard to move because as soon as we got this out we were able to shift everything worked fine I wonder if someone got rid of this motor because they assumed it was going to be a large repair on the lower unit and probably could have just pulled this off, replaced this, put it back together and went with it. But I like to, repl I like to pull stuff apart. Besides, it makes some good videos that you guys probably want to see. So we put all of these parts in our parts washer. I just have a cheap Harbor Freight. I do have Safety Clean in there. Over the years, I've used some better stuff than Safety Clean. I've actually used some WD-40 in there as well. Kind of have my own concoction mixed in there. It's pretty nasty looking, but it does clean up all the major grease. And then I just spray it down with brake cleaner. And then I just clean off the surfaces. This is our bearing carrier. So again, it had an O-ring here, so we pulled that off. We clean this out all the way. Now we have seals in here, so we're going to pull the seals out of everything and O-rings and do them one by one, and then we'll start the, re the reassembly. Simple seal puller tool. You've seen me use it before if you've watched any of my videos. I do try and pull the first one out as opposed to try and do them both at the same time. Not always successful. Let's see how difficult these are. There is some paint on it. Someone painted over the lower unit and just sprayed paint right inside here as well. So let's see what this does. Try it the other way, pull it towards myself. All right, so that's one. It's not corroded and rusted, so that's a good thing. A lot of times these get rusted. Now the lower one, I do a little, see a little bit of rust in. So these are put in with the lip up on the first one and the lip down on the bottom one. The theory is the pressure from the gearbox squeezes that lip and the pressure from the water squeezes that lip on the other side to prevent it from getting water inside or oil out. So let's get the other one out. This one might be a little tougher with the corrosion on it. Actually, not too bad. I wonder if these were replaced at one point because it doesn't look like they're from 1995. So now we have a bearing in here. We want to make sure we don't get all kinds of crud and dirt in there. So we did clean everything with the parts washer, but I may actually clean this with a little more parts washer again 
because I want this surface around the outside that this seal is going to go against to be nice and clean. And then I'm going to use a little bit of my tricky silicone on there um, just to make sure I make a good seal. Then we just have the O-ring to go on the outside of this. We clean that up. Right, we got that groove nice and clean and then this will be ready to be installed. So we'll clean that up. So next one is this one and we'll get this in the vise. Both of them came out at the same time, so now we can see how they're stacked and see how the lip is on the bottom of that one and on the top of this one. So again, these don't look too bad. They're not all badly corroded, but we'll clean up this area here. Again, there's a bearing in there, so we want to clean it carefully so we don't get chunks of dirt or something metal maybe. Sometimes when you grab this, if you're not careful, you go a little too deep and you'll gouge the side. How do I know that? So sometimes you got to get in there and clean it really good, maybe even with a little Dremel tool to get the edge off of it. And then again, fill that little with silicone. Doesn't look like I damaged it at all. I might've caught the edge of this one a little bit, but we'll, we'll clean it up. Next is our shift shaft. This is going to be a little, can't, not going to be able to pop it out here. So we're going to take a little tiny screwdriver and we're going to get inside here and just work this around and poke it out. That's the technical term, poke it out. And here we go. So I do have some white powder on there, right? It's got some corrosion around it. So I'll bet you that's what happened is that corrosion inside there pushed and squeezed this O-ring against the shaft. So we're going to have to really get in there and that's a tight spot. So we're going to have to get tricky to get in there and clean that out really good. I'll probably bend a screwdriver. One of the greatest things about cheaper Harbor Freight tools is that you can make bends on them because you're not worried about necessarily ruining an expensive tool. You can just buy another one and we can get in here and grind this out. Get all of that corrosion out of there. This we won't put any silicone or anything around unless we might need it to slip it in. The new one we're going to pinch and put inside there. So we'll continue on in our next episode putting all these parts back together and then we'll show you the lower unit and the gears and how that goes together as well. Looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a great day.